Welcome. My name is Brenda Kasuva. Thank you for taking the time to check in out this video, which is going to focus on getting you to pass the real estate exam. The topic of focus is fair housing laws and regulations in the state of Maryland. The discussion of fair housing laws and regulations are important in order for you to know what protections do exist to make sure you are not discriminated against when you are out there looking to buy a house or you're looking to rent one and better yet when you are the real estate agent to make sure that the sellers and the landlords do not discriminate against these protected categories or traits. This topic of fair housing starts off with a review from the federal side or when you're taking the national real estate exam. There is a video that you are able to check out that goes through in detail the definitions that you also need to remember, for example, steering, blockbusting, and such. Definitely click on the link presented. Let's review. There are seven protected categories on the national side, meaning no matter where you are in the United States, the, the, these are the seven protected categories. Race, color, religion, national origin, sex, disability, and familial status. Here we want you to make sure you know what is special about Maryland because after all, you are here to pass the Maryland real estate exam. In Maryland, we have four protected categories in addition to the ones on the national or federal side. Some jurisdictions will also have additional ones. We're going to review what those are. Keep in mind, for exam purposes, they will not be able, or rather they will not be asking you, what are the additional ones that maybe are applicable in Anne Arundel County or Baltimore County? You just need to know that there are jurisdictions that have extra ones beyond the seven, that are federal and beyond the four that are applicable to all jurisdictions in Maryland. The four are marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity, and source of income. These are displayed based on when they were in effect in our state of Maryland. We shall go through the definitions next. Marital status is a state, now all of us are protected in this one, it's a state of being single, married, separated, divorced, or widowed. For example, Lasella cannot say, I just want married individuals to live here. When you're working with a salesperson, a licensed individual, dear seller, marital status covers anyone who's single, married, separated, divorced, or widowed. This one sometimes gets confused with familiar status. A sidetrack, familiar status on the federal protected categories, that is a presence of children. Sexual orientation. The definition of sexual orientation is how you identify in terms of whom you're attracted to. You identifying a, as male or female in reference to homosexuality, heterosexuality, or bisexuality. Gender identity. This is the third protected category here in Maryland. It is defined as the appearance, expression, or behavior of a person, regardless of the person's assigned sex at birth. The person's assigned sex at birth could be male or female, 
but the individual's appearance, expression, or behavior aligns with that, or it might not. This will be demonstrated different ways. The individual might have consistent or assertion of how they identify, or it may be from other evidence that gender identity, how that person truly believes that they identify, and therefore here some of you might be exposed to the use of different pronouns in order to respect this person's gender identity, whom they believe they are. House Bill 231 or Senate Bill 530 was introduced to us in October 1st, 2020. This is a Housing Opportunities Made Equal Act. Remember here we're covering what is special about Maryland. This law covers source of income. Reminder again, it was added October 1st, 2020. What does it entail? Source of income, in summary, is any lawful source of money paid directly or indirectly on behalf of a renter, somebody who's leasing, or a buyer. What does this look does like? It could come from a profession, an occupation, or job, whether you're getting a W-2, whether you're getting a stipend, a grant, as long as it is a lawful profession that you're doing or job. It doesn't stop there. This source of income could also come from any government or private assistance. It's a grant. It could be a loan that I'm using while I am buying a house. An example being, let's say you're a first-time home buyer or you're a teacher and you're getting an assistance from your employer or from that particular area like Baltimore City or Montgomery County all those are jurisdictional, so that is covered. And then it goes on to what some of us summarize as housing vouchers. Any rental assistance program is included in source of income protection. The other source of income, believe it or not, is any gift, any inheritance, pension, annuity, alimony, child support, or any other consideration of benefit. Here's where the lender cannot say no because you're getting money from these different sources. And the seller, for example, cannot say no because it is money that is lawful. The other place is you've sold your house. That money that you're going to be getting is covered under source of income. So for example, if I go somewhere where I want to rent, they cannot say we only want to accept you because we want to see a paycheck. Well, I got this money from the sale of the house. It is in my bank account. I am protected. We pause here because we know that you are doing your very best to pass the real estate exam and therefore we have an offer for you. We now have the release of our study book as of this week, October the 26th. So if you're watching this video after October 26th, we definitely have a good deal for you. And also we have something to help you on the national conversation of the exam. This resource is found on our website, trainingwithbrenda.com. We have practice questions, exclusive video playlist, study outline and tips, and extensive topic to review the Maryland part of the exam. You can use it on your laptop, your phone. It is an ebook that you're able to get on our website. We don't want to forget about the people who are taking the national real estate exam. 
So as you look to pass the national real estate exam, look no further. Press. Pass real estate exam in simple steps is a platform that will offer you weekly practice questions, weekly live 30 minutes with a qualified instructor to ask questions or we can review the content with you, self-paced material to review the content, practice questions on topics, and a practice exam to simulate what you might experience when you go sit for the licensing exam. You have three days to check it out and see whether it's a good fit. And when you decide to move forward, you either get access to it by subscribing on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis. Check that out. Go to our website, Training with Brenda. We reviewed that we have the seven protected categories nationwide. Maryland as a state has four additional protected categories. We also introduced to you that there are certain areas that will have additional ones. This information is provided by Maryland Realtors. You will see that there are certain areas or pockets that will have no additional ones beyond the federal seven and the four from Maryland. And then we have some areas like Anne Arundel, just calling out a few, Howard County, Montgomery County, Prince George's, that might have additional protected categories. To echo what we shared before on the real estate exam, they will not ask you the specific ones. You just need to know that the additional protected categories in different parts of our state. There are exemptions to this. Exemptions meaning where the individuals can pick and choose whom it is that they want to have a real estate transaction with. So here example, oh rather, the exemptions that do exist is when somebody's selling or leasing a single family dwelling without the use of a real estate agent or broker and their advertisement does not show preference. So yes, you are selling your house on your own. You might prefer to sell to certain individuals. Your advertisement doesn't show that preference and you're not using a real estate agent. Disclaimer. A review from the national side when it comes to race there are no exemptions to that so you cannot pick someone based on their race second exemption that does exist is now when we're talking about on the basis of sex male or female sex sexual orientation gender identity, marital status, or source of income. So the ones in Maryland is where, again, you can pick and choose as long as you are going to be living in that space. So you can, for example, say, I only want to live with males because you're living in that house. Now remember here, an agent is not involved and your advertising should not be showing that preference. The exemptions is where it cannot be more than five rental units. The rental of any apartment in a dwelling that contains not more than five rental units if the owner maintains the dwelling as their principal residence. So you're living in one of the units and you have four. More than five, you are not exempt. In Maryland, the department or organization that makes sure we follow these rules is known as Maryland Commission on Civil Rights. You're able to visit their website and gain more. For the purposes of reviewing for the exam, we need to know that they are the ones who are going to enforce the Maryland laws against discrimination, not only in housing, but also in employment and public accommodation and state contracts. To pass the real estate exam, MCCR, you need to know that 
There are nine volunteer members that make up the commission. Sounds familiar. They are appointed by the governor and confirmed by Maryland Senate. These commission members are volunteer members and they get a six year term and they also meet once a month. The meetings are public. You can attend at any time by visiting their website. All of this information is all going to make sense in terms of practice for you because you're going to be taking a fair housing class as part of your continuing education credits. A minimum of one and a half hours is required for your two year cycle. When you're taking that continuing education course, we shall definitely expand on the practice side. You made it this far. So where can you find this information to do with fair housing? It is found in the topic of business conduct, where the six questions on the salesperson exam and the nine questions on the broker exam. This topic of business conduct will go through offers, commissions, including rebates, advertising and signs, I have a video that reviews that part of that topic. And then here you go, Fair Housing Laws and Regulation. This is a video reviewing that topic. And the last discussion on this particular topic of business conduct is summary suspensions and convictions. Thank you so much for your time. Go ahead and subscribe, like it, share it. I'll see you next time.